Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video. In this one, I am showcasing the most bizarre set of construction that we have ever encountered. What you are looking at is a basement foundation that clearly somebody had a major screw up on when they were building the house. Uh, I spoke with the homeowner and he figured that somebody ran out of material and therefore had to build a secondary wall on top of the uh, existing botched foundation wall. So you actually see floor joists inset into the concrete, which was normal, but then they ran out of concrete and couldn't fill it up. Uh, to the top and a pony wall had to be placed over top of it. This was a huge disaster for degradation and building uh, damage. He had it batted. Uh, the batting was allowing condensation, frost to build up, bugs to come in. Uh, he was having little rodents and things getting into the space at various times, but he decided when he opened it up that this just could not stay. Now you tell me, how are you going to fix something like this with batting? Uh, you'd have got oddball squares and dissimilar materials all over air leakages like a sieve. In fact, every single one of these fiberglass bats uh, had ice behind them. They were all frozen to it and I told him that you'll have to pull the bats out ahead of time, which he did. And after he got the bats out, he discovered that he had quite a few areas of damaged uh, exterior sheathing. So you'll see those little black squares of paper up there at the top. Uh, those are the areas that we decided that we'd put uh, construction paper over top of it, stapled in place so that the spray foam had a, a bond break between it and the outside because come summertime, this is being done in the wintertime, he's going to have that plywood uh, removed and repaired with the stucco and the siding guys. So that's going to take place under much warmer conditions. This is being sprayed in February. Uh, it's minus 15 degrees Celsius outside, but everything's warm and dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, two or a little bit more, two inches of closed cell foam over top of the outside sheathing. And then we're going to roll it over the outside plates to get everything sealed so that he doesn't have to rely solely on caulking and that there isn't going to be a bunch of drafty air seals. You're going to see these steel channels here. What is that? That is what we call bracing where we are. Uh, it's to provide additional box support to the foundation so that the outward pressure of the soil is not pushing the foundation and it's socketed in at the floor and into the floor joists. So here we are repairing uh, this structure, the envelope with closed cell foam. We're using a wall tight uh, closed cell two pound density foam made by BSF. The purple foam is a Canadian exclusive. Uh, there's the construction paper that I had described to you earlier. The homeowner and I came up with that plan as a way of getting his envelope and insulation in now, but still giving him the ability to deal with repairing this exterior sheeting uh, at a later date come summertime. And he might not even get to it right away. Like he told me, he may or may not do it in the summer, but at least he's warm and dry on the inside and he doesn't have spray foam permanently welded to the outside. So here we are, uh, hose came in through a window from the outside, we've got the truck as close as we can to keep everything warm. And my guy's going to detail out the inside of the box and get his nominal thickness. And then what we'll do after is we'll start to roll the foam over the transition so that the plates uh, have spray foam on the face of them. Obviously, with these channels and these braces, restoring structure uh, to the foundation and the floor system. Uh, he's going to be placing a framed wall. Originally there had been a framed wall, but he's going to be placing the framed wall inset into these steel braces. So this drywall is going to be uh, six to eight inches in some spit spots ahead of the spray foam. So we're not screwing up the drywall detail in any way, shape or form by doing it this way. And it's the proper way to do it is that you've got all these dissimilar joints where you've got wood and metal and you've got concrete all intermixing and there's just lots of air leakage here. This thing's a sieve of air leakage. So this is a way to roll the spray foam in and around everything, get it all sealed. There's just absolutely no way to deal with this but with closed cell foam. And you can see that it is bonding tenaciously and then we roll it over the facing and stop the air and then we'll come back here, start at the top, work our way down and then we'll get all of the walls here spray foamed completely airtight and then at that point he can frame he can finish his electrical off and then he can put up his sheetrock you're seeing that the foam's going on quite nice here you see that dark piece ahead of the wave of rising foam that's the foam going from a liquid mixed state to a rising and 
uh, polymerized state where it's actually forming uh, the spray foam on the wall, rising the 25 times and setting and is dry to the touch in as little as three seconds in these points. And my secondary crew chief was with him that day and he pulled out the Fleur infrared uh, heat gun that we've got. We really like this gun for checking on our work, doing befores and afters. And he's just playing around with it here, showing how warm the spray foam's going on. We see the spray foam's all the way into the 40s and showing how warm and important the heated hose is along the floor. And then what we're getting for internal temperatures, you can actually see where the spray foam has just been applied fresh. It's still reading 40 degrees Celsius warm and 17 degrees Celsius on the inside of the cold foundation walls. Uh, this solution will end the problem for multiple generations. And we could have put more foam on for the gentleman, but he's retired and uh, working on a bit of a budget. So it wasn't that he wasn't going to use foam. It was just, we'll detail out the foam to a couple of inches, which will be more than enough. So there's the finished product. And we've never seen a problem quite like this in a wall before, not with these oddball framing. But now he's got structural support re-established. He's got the strength that the foam is going to add, the vapor seal, the air seal, and then we're keeping the bugs, the beetles, the rodents out and this thing is going to be warm, dry, and comfortable uh, for the life of the structure that he'll ever be living in here, and then he can put his wall ahead of it and everything's solved. So, okay, see you on the next video. Click on the like and the subscribe. Catch you later.